good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Great. Okay, my name is Brad Brazil, and I'm the Engineering and Forest Resources Reference Librarian uh, here at Mitchell Memorial Library. And today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use the library's resources from wherever you are to get the information you need for your papers or if you're writing a thesis, dissertation. We have a wide range of resources and services that are available to our distance users. Okay. All right, so I'll be talking to you about the print resources that we have here in the library and how you can access those print resources from where you are. I'll be spending a lot of time talking about the online resources, and I'll be also emphasizing how you can get assistance. Now, whenever we're talking about information sources and finding and using information sources, it's a good idea to keep in mind that you want to make sure that you use those resources uh, in an appropriate way. And I'd like to remind you of the definition of plagiarism in the Honor Code. Plagiarism has been defined as the appropriation of another person's ideas, processes, results, or words without giving appropriate credit. So as you go through and you find the different articles and books and other types of uh, sources that you may need, make sure that you always have enough information to write a proper citation. And also remember that it's not just taking someone's exact words that requires you to uh, cite that information, or, or in the case of words, put it in quotation marks. But also, if you take someone else's ideas and you put it in your own words, you still need to say where you got that information. Now, some of the sources that you may be needing might be the, the books that we have here in the library. Now, the books, if you uh, have been here on campus uh, before in the library, the books that you can check out are located on the third and fourth floors of the library. And they're shelved by what we call Library of Congress call number systems. And they're checked out at Access Services on the second floor. Now, Access Services, they also have what we call Library Express. That's a service that uh, they run. And that is basically if you request a book through Library Express, then someone will go up to the third or fourth floor, pull the book that you need, and then we can mail it to you. And you're then just responsible for uh, getting it back to us in some way. Likewise, there are times when you may need an article from our journals that are in our print collection. So in our uh, physical library here, we have them, uh, our journals in the second floor and the first floor, depending on uh, how old the print journals are. But whenever you need an article, you don't have to drive all the way up here. You can just use Library Express, and Access Services will pull the journal and make a PDF of the article, and then make it available to you that way. Another place in the library I want you to kind of be aware of is the reference department. This is where I work. We do have there the reference collection, which includes a lot of specialized uh, things like ASTM standards and various uh, engineering handbooks and such. But we do also have librarians uh, like myself who work there. And our job is to help you get the information you need. I'll be showing you my contact information later. And certainly, anytime you have any questions, feel free to contact me directly. But you can also get assistance from the library's website whenever you see this Ask a Librarian uh, little logo here. That will connect you to the different ways you can get in touch with a librarian. We do have a chat reference service where you can get one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance uh, immediately uh, during those uh, chat reference hours. And it'll also show you the phone number to the general reference desk. But as I said, I'll be showing you later my contact information that you can uh, contact me directly if you'd like. Now, to find all this information that we have here in the library, as well as our, besides our print stuff, our electronic resources you have access to, 
there are kind of like two, two main types of uh, resources, searching tools I want you to uh, want to introduce to you. First of all, we have the online catalog. The online catalog tells you what books we have in our collection. Also, it will tell you if we subscribe to a particular journal or not, and if so, when we started to subscribe to it, and if we still subscribe to it. And it'll also help you find uh, theses and dissertations that other graduate students have written, uh, as well as some government documents and that sort of thing. One thing to remember about our online catalog is that we do share it with the Mississippi University for Women, as well as other area libraries. So sometimes you may find something in there that might be useful, but it may not be uh, what we have here physically. Now, also we have another kind of general category of, of search tools called what we refer to as databases. These are the things you can use to find journal articles, so looking for uh, at the article level rather than just uh, the journal level like in the online catalog. And you can also use it to find conference proceedings, maybe dissertations and theses from other university libraries and other types of materials as well. Now more and more of this stuff is becoming available electronically. Sometimes you will still need to uh, use our print, however, so just keep that in mind. Here are some of the databases that uh, you may find useful. Scopus is one of our primary engineering databases. It's a very multidisciplinary database. It has coverage of uh, not only engineering, but also medicine, uh, some in the social sciences, you know, business and things like that. Um, but it's a very great uh, resource uh, for engineering. We also have something called Discovery. Discovery is kind of a different sort of database in that Discovery is actually searching uh, a large number of databases that we get from the company called EBSCO. Discovery will search all of those databases simultaneously. And that can be very useful at times. It can be a little messy because sometimes you get duplicate results because it's searching all these different uh, databases. But Discovery, it's a fairly new uh, addition to our list of databases and it's a very useful one. Also, the dissertations and theses database is just kind of what it, the name implies. If you are looking for the full text of a, perhaps a dissertation at a university, some other university in the US, there's a good chance that you can get it uh, electronically as a PDF through this database. Now, Google Scholar, it's not, uh, you don't know, think about it probably as a library database, but there are links within Google Scholar that I'll be talking more about later on that allows you to link over from Google Scholar into the uh, library's electronic holdings. And Google Scholar, it's a good supplement for these other databases, but it shouldn't be the sole database that you search. Another one I want to mention here is WorldCat. WorldCat is basically supposed to be the world catalog. And when you're searching that, you're actually searching the university uh, library catalogs from throughout the US, as well as some foreign countries. So it's a good way to locate books and other things that might be related uh, to your research. And again, usually if you find something through there, we can get it for you through a service called Interlibrary Loan, which is where we get, we request it from another library for you. Now, whenever you're searching these databases like Scopus or Discovery, you're going to come across this Find It button. And the Find It button, it's kind of important to understand what it's doing. The Find It button, it, when you click on it, it uh, starts some uh, processes, some special software. It's going to help you locate the full text of, for example, an article to see if it's available, perhaps full text in another database. And if it is, it'll give you a link to that full text. If it's not available electronically, it'll let you search the online catalog to see if we perhaps 
have that article in our print collection. And if not, it will give you a link to interlibrary loan so that you can then request us, request that we get it from the, another library for you. Now, one thing about this Find It button uh, to remember is that the Find It button really works best with journal articles. With things like books and conference proceedings, it doesn't work as well. Usually for those type of things, you need to check the online catalog directly under the book title or perhaps under the conference name in the case of a proceeding. And again, I'll talk more about that once we uh, go to the library's website. All right, and it's also important whenever you are searching these different databases to understand what exactly you are searching. Here you see a record for uh, an article in Scopus. And, and this is kind of a typical record. And you can see here at the top, they give you the, basically the general citation as well as the author information. And then below that, you have an abstract, so the summary of the article. And then you have certain keywords associated with that article. So this is not a full text search that you're doing in Scopus. You're not searching you know, the full text of the article, just this, what we would refer to as metadata. And one special thing about Scopus, though, unlike most of our other databases, at the bottom of the record, you will usually be able to see the reference list for this particular article. So in other words, suppose this article is useful to you. You can click on the Find It button to see if we have the full text. But if you just kind of peruse the reference list for this article, you can find other uh, resources that might be very helpful to you as well. All right, we're we'll going to be looking more at Scopus in a second. Uh, I did want to mention a little bit more about interlibrary loan. Uh, for This is a service where we can get what you need from another library. Um, up here where it says New Request, notice if you need an article, you just click up here where it says Article, a book, book chapter. One of the difference between requesting a book and a book chapter is that a book, for copyright reasons, cannot be scanned in its entirety. So a book has to be sent physically through mail. If you request a book chapter, we can actually make a PDF of it in most cases and make it available to you through this system here. As I mentioned, kind of part of this interlibrary loan system is called Library Express. And Library Express is what you would use to request an item from the library's print collection. So if you want to request a an article or a book chapter from the library's physical collections here. You can click on photocopy. Or if you want us to mail you the whole book, you can then just click on book. And then uh, you would, as I said, just be responsible for getting uh, that book back to us somehow before the due date. All right. Now another neat feature of our databases, most of them allow you to create search alerts. So there may be certain uh, research projects you're, you'll be engaged in for, you know, it could be a number of months or even a number of years, depending on what you're doing. Certainly if you're writing a thesis or dissertation, uh, you know, you may need to keep up with what's happening, what's being published in that particular area. So if, you're, if you do a search, for example, in Scopus, and it's providing you some good results, what you can do is you can set up a search alert. And then basically, whenever new things are added to Scopus, you can then receive an email telling you about that particular article or conference proceeding that has been added to Scopus. So that really helps you, you know, save some time. You don't have to go back and search the database over and over again. It just kind of sends the results to you. Another type of alert you might want to uh, set up is a table of contents alerts. And the way this works, it's usually best to go directly to the publisher. So perhaps there's a handful of journals that are particularly useful uh, for you. Uh, and you can 
sign up for these table of contents alerts, and then whenever a new issue uh, comes, becomes available, you'll basically receive a, an email that very day, and then you can uh, see what's being published um, in those key journals for you. Another neat feature of these databases is that most of them will allow you to create your own personal database of citations by exporting results from the database into a software program called EndNote. EndNote, it's a, a commercial software, and we sell it in the library for a reduced price of $50 for graduate students. And so basically, if you're uh, you know, working on a project and you need to keep up with dozens or sometimes hundreds of different uh, citations, these different references that might be relevant to your research, EndNote is software is specially designed just for that. And also there's a system where you can actually, if you're typing in Word, you can reach over into Word and pull in a citation and it will format it in a citation style that you want it to do. So that's very useful, especially for those of you who will be doing a thesis or dissertation you might want to consider that. And again, we can mail this to you uh, if you can't come up here to purchase it. All right, also, uh, we're going to be looking momentarily at uh, some research guides. Uh, these are guides that have been put together to bring together some of the key uh, resources for various subject areas. We do have them for most areas of engineering. We don't have one yet for ag and bioengineering. Uh, but for the others, we do. And so that's a, those are resources that it, it would be worth kind of looking over to see some of the things that might be useful to you. Uh, are there any questions at this point? Um, if, if, uh, all right, let's get into the library's website. So I'm going to go, oh, this isn't a link. Yet. Oh, where's the link? OK. So from the main MSU website, you can click on libraries. Okay. So here you can see the library's uh, website here. Uh, right up in the upper right, this is the Ask a Librarian link. And if you click on that, that's going to sh show you those different options to contacting us. Uh, for example, we have this chat with a librarian uh, service, especially if you are working on something and you come across a problem and it can't wait for you to, like if I'm out of the office and you need, a, need some help right away, we have this chat reference service during these hours right here and you can get uh, live assistance with the librarian that way. Um, some other things here. Uh, there are many different ways to get to the different resources that we have. Um, under research, you can see some of those links to the online catalog, to that discovery thing I told you about, the e-journals. Under services, this is one way to get to the interlibrary loan. And uh, need help, there are some other things. But a lot of the main ones are also right under this go directly to. Uh, some of the quick uh, links there. Now, what, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to click here where it says Research Guides. And this takes us to our, our Research Guide portal. And over on the left, you'll see many different subject areas. And so I have to choose one. So I'll choose Civil and Environmental Engineering. Uh, like I said, there are some for most of the engineering uh, subject areas. Uh, except Ag and Bio. But I'm going to click on that. And then once again, I click on Civil and Environmental Engineering Research Guide right in the middle. Okay, and yet another one of my pictures, so I apologize for that. But here you can see, um, here in the main search box, I have this Start Your Research. So this is really, again, just a, a quick start. If you're uh, researching something, you need to find books on a topic, I'll give you a link to the online catalog. 
Like I said, you can also use the online catalog to see if we subscribe to a particular journal. And then I give you, uh, like if you're starting your research, probably Scopus is a good place to start. And I'm going to uh, go into these in a second, but I want to point out over here on the left-hand side, uh, I give you some other information you may find useful. We do offer a number of workshops uh, on software as well as uh, things like research ethics, how to format theses and dissertations, and a number of those are available online. And if I uh, click here, uh, I can see for this month, this coming month, for example, we do have one about uh, avoiding plagiarism that's coming up next week. And then there's that research ethics ones that's going to be online. And we offer others as well. So you may want to check those out. We're trying to make as much available to distance users as possible. Uh, down below that, under grad students, I do have a link to the Office of Thesis and Dissertation Format Review. So if you are doing a thesis or dissertation, it's a good idea to get familiar with the guidelines for that, um, the formatting guidelines, so it doesn't kind of catch you unaware uh, later on. And then there's a link here to EndNote. And I'll click on that. And that actually takes you to another research guide, which is for EndNote. But Let's see here. There we go. And they give you some more information, including purchasing EndNote right here. So I'd encourage you to kind of uh, look at that and see if it's right for you or not. Let me get back to my page, OK? All right, so let's now go into the online catalog. I'm sure many of you have searched it before, but I'm opening it in a new tab. All right, so. As I said, we do share this catalog with many other libraries, including MUW uh, and East Mississippi Community College. And it has been pretty amazing to see how many books the, that uh, EMCC, the library there, has that uh, engineering students here have found useful. But I'm just going to do a real quick search right now. I'm going to do a keyword search by, under uh, word or phrase. Look for something about dredging. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple search for dredging, and then click on search. Now, for a lot of the engineering and science topics, uh, you'll find that there's a lot of uh, government uh, activity, of course, involved uh, with those type of topics. And so some of the results you get may be like this one, which is a congressional hearing. Um, number two is an example of something you may come across. Uh, you know, one white dolphin, a mother dolphin, and her al albino calf, uh, et cetera. Uh, that's kind of like the downside of uh, when you're searching all of these different uh, libraries. Some of these are public libraries, and so you do come across some children books. But um, that's just something you have to be aware of. Um, let me scroll down a bit. Let's see. Some of these things you're going to find also are going to be theses and dissertations that other people have written. And I'm going to actually go to the second page to finally get to a kind of a more normal, typical book. Thank you. OK. So yeah, 21, Sustainable Management of Sediment Resources. So it tells you right here it's in the Mitchell Memorial Library Circulating Collection. And if I click on that, you'll notice here that it gives a little bit more information about the book, um, including the, the publisher, and a brief summary. And they also tell you it is in the circulating collection, so that means it is available to check out. And here's the call number. Um, and for you, if you can't make it to MSU to get it, you can always request it through Library Express, and we can get it to you. If you click on a look inside, you'll get a little bit more information here. And then if you click on Catalog Record, that'll give you some more information as well. And especially these subject terms here can sometimes give you a good idea 
about how to rephrase your search. So that's kind of uh, you know, the basics of finding books. But also, if you have books checked out and you need to renew them or to see what you have checked out, we do allow you to do that right over here on the right. All right, now I'm going to go back into advanced search. And let's take a look now how you can use the online catalog to find out if we subscribe to a particular journal. And how you may be using this, um, suppose you are, you've printed out an article and you look at the reference list and you find within the reference list, you know, an article that you would like to follow up on and see if it's uh, useful or not. The online catalog is where you can go to do that, to see if the library has access to it. And so I'm going to go here um, where it says journal title. And this is one that we've actually gotten a few requests for recently. It's a journal called Geotechnique. Right? Geotechnique. And so it's an article from within there that I want. So I enter that. Here it says journal title. And I'm going to click on search. And you can see here there's actually two different results for it. One is for the print holdings. The other is for the electronic holdings. Of course, we're always interested in electronic holdings first. So let's click on the Find It button to see what we have in print and what we have electronically for this journal. Click on Find It. And basically, you can see here that we have this journal from 2003 to the present. Okay? So if I follow this link right here, I can get any article you know, within about the past 10 years. Now, if I need something before then, then I have to kind of see if we have it in our print collection. So I'm going to close that a little tab there. So let's take a look at our print collection. So this is the little green icon here. That means our print holdings. I click on that. Sometimes these holding statements can be a little hard to decipher, unfortunately, just the way the system is. But you can see here that we do have it all the way back to volume one, which was in 1948. But what happened is we decided to go with uh, online only access to it. And so basically, December 2009 was our last print issue we received. So you can see there's kind of some overlap with the print and the uh, online. So you have to kind of look carefully to see uh, what exactly our holdings are. And once again, if you need something from one of these journals like Geotechnique, you can uh, request it through Library Express. Now, Library Express, if you are enrolled in an official distance education degree program, one of those Campus 5 designated programs, then this will be a free service for you. Now, if you are not in one of those official distance education programs, there is a charge of, I believe it's 25 cents a page. So for a 10-page uh, article, you know, that could run you 250. So um, still not a bad deal, but um, I'm sure most of you are probably in those official uh, Campus 5 type programs. Um, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, the online catalog. Uh, any questions about that? OK. All right, I'm going to close that. And let's get back into this research guide. All right, so suppose I found some books or whatever related to dredging. And now I want to find some articles. And one of the nice things about the uh, books, of course, is that sometimes articles tend to go into some really specific details about your, your research topic. And they don't always give you a good uh, big picture. So that's why books can sometimes be very useful. 
And I'm going to go into Scopus now. All right, so here you see in Scopus you have this uh, search box that appears. There's a, a single search box. To add another search field if you need to, you can click on the little link right here. And so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and enter dredging in my first search box. And suppose my uh, research is really talking more about the environmental aspects of dredging. So if I'm going to, to do a topic like that, I can come over here to the second search box and I can enter the word environmental. Now, some of the, remember when you're searching this, you are searching the uh, citation of articles, the abstract, as well as keywords. Um, sometimes maybe environmental is not in the abstract or the keyword, but maybe the word environment is. One way you can make sure that these databases search both of those terms is to, here I type in environment, and I put in an asterisk. The asterisk is telling the database to look for anything that begins with those particular uh, letters, okay? So no matter what the word ending is. Now you may also find it useful to put in some other uh, related terms and then connect it with an OR. And I'm going to put in E-C-O-L-O-G and put in the asterisk to look for the word ecology, uh, ecological, uh, anything else that may begin with that. Okay, so in this search right here, I'm basically, it has to find the term dredging somewhere in the record, and it also has to find one of these terms in the record as well. Now there are different ways that you, you can uh, search specific fields. The default is the title, abstract, and keywords. Um, down here you can see that they do have different subject areas. Um, sometimes it, it is useful to limit by the subject areas, but unless you're getting a lot of false results, you know, those things that uh, are totally in left field, you may want to not do this because certain, uh, you know, social science uh, journals may actually have some type of uh, information about uh, policy aspects of dredging. So you don't want to exclude anything uh, unnecessarily. So I'm going to leave those all checked. And I'm also going to leave the years like they are. Now I'm going to click on search. All right, so we found 4,055 results. So that is uh, quite a bit, and I might, and that, there is probably some specific aspect of, of this topic, so I might would want to enter another uh, search term, but let's kind of take a look at this, these results here. Now, unlike most of our databases, um, Scopus is going to sort your results by the date. In other words, the most recent ones first. And there's already one in there with the 2013 date. Okay, interesting how that works out. But over here on the left, you can see different ways that you can limit your results, uh, such as here by article type. So if you just want the scholarly articles and not the conference pap papers, you can click on article and then click on limit to. You can also go to where it says source title. You can see here marine pollution bulletin is one of the main sources for this and so that, that can be useful to know uh, as well. You can click on keyword and I'll click on view more and view more once again. Again, looking at these keywords, this will tell you how many of these appeared in the different records and that can be a good way to know how to rephrase your search. And also, oh, up at the top here, you can see uh, they give you some authors. Okay, 
Well, unfortunately, some of these are listed as anonymous. But that can give you some idea about who are the more prolific writers within this uh, topic. Now, in addition to sorting by date, if I click on this pull-down menu, you can sort a couple of different ways, including by relevance. And I'm going to click on relevance. And that is the default for a lot of our databases. But let's take a look here. Uh, this number one, this is, um, let's see here, is that the one? Yes, uh, environmental effects of dredging on sediment, nutri nutrients, carbon, and granulometry in a tropical estuary. It's from a journal called Environmental Monitoring and Assessment. If you want to see a little bit more about it, you don't have to go into the full record. You can click on Show Abstract, and it will pull it up, tell you what they've done. Um, it will also tell you, like in our PowerPoint, you saw how Scopus will tell you uh, the reference list for this article. Scopus will also tell you how many other articles in Scopus have cited this article. So since this was published in 2007, it has been cited seven times. And I can click on that link, and I can view those seven things that have cited it. So that can be a useful way to find additional sources as well. Now, if I click on the Find It button, it's going to try to find the full text of the article. And it's found it in the Springer Verlog database. And I can click on that. And there's the basic record. And then I can click on PDF to get the full text. Close that and close this. So that's what you usually hope for, is you get the electronic full text. Let's go down to number seven. This is called Dredging Pollution and Environmental Conservation in the United States. And this is from a journal called Environmental Conservation. It is from 1976. We, some of our electronic holdings do go back that far. Sometimes they go back way further than that. But more typically, our electronic holdings are going to go back maybe 15 years or so. But if I click here on the Find It button, notice it's not giving me a link to the full text. But it is giving me a link to see if we own a print copy. So I'm going to follow that link. And it's going to take me back into the online catalog. And basically, um, if it was available electronically, the find it would have told me. Um, so I'm going to click on the print record here. And you can see that we do have it from 1974 to 2008 in a print collection. So again, this is an example of one that you could use Library Express to ask us to make a PDF of it for you. Now, still another thing you may come across is this number 14. It's called From Hand Drag to Jumbo, A Millennium of Dredging. It's from a journal called Terra e Agua. All right, from 1999. Let's click on the Find It button. It's not available electronically. We check to see if it's in print. And notice it's not available in print as well. So this is a time where you can do the next option, which is interlibrary loan, which usually works. Oh, OK. Gotcha. OK. All right. So basically, then, you just need to log in with your MSU uh, net ID and net password. For time's sake, I won't do all that. But first time you do it, you do need to set up a profile. Uh, giving us, you know, your, your kind of like a little user profile. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that each time you request something through interlibrary loan, there will be a field that says how much you're willing to pay. You can always put in zero, and then we will, uh, well, regardless of what you put in there, we'll try to get it from places that we can get it from for free. And if we can't get it for free, uh, if you put in zero, we'll let you know that, and then you can decide whether or not you want it or not. And if you're working on some type of a grant, you can actually a lot of times use that to pay for interlibrary loan uh, charges. 
Um, coming up here at the, the top, real quick, you can see where it says export. If you select results, you can actually export the results to EndNote, like I was saying earlier, so that you can um, create your own little database of citations. They also have it where you can set up an alert. If, if you go into uh, up here where it says register and you create your own Scopus username and password, and I wouldn't use the MSU one because it's, it's stored on the Scopus server, but if you do that, you can then set up an alert to tell Scopus to send you an email whenever new things are added to the database. All right, um, real quickly, I want to show you discovery, how that works. And I'm just going to do, the, for time's sake, the same thing. I'll just do dredging and environment. You're actually, oops, big misspelling there. Okay, you are searching multiple databases here, uh, but the, you do have the find it button in here. If you go over on the left-hand side, they do tell you some of the, which databases are giving you the most results. And sometimes it is best to go directly into, like leave discovery and go directly into those databases, because usually those databases do allow you to uh, have advanced searches in a way that um, some of these others do not. But one thing I want to, again, kind of emphasize is that all of these databases, they do have these special subject terms, and using these can really be a big help in helping you to uh, get the information that you need, because different databases use different terminology for similar uh, concepts. Now this one right here, this article I brought up is an example of a review. A review article is one that basically summarizes other uh, research that has been done. So you know, most of the scholarly or peer-reviewed journals, they basically go through their uh, literature review, methodology, results, and all that. Uh, but this is not reporting one specific research study. This is kind of like compiling, you know, giving summaries of maybe 50 different studies that have been conducted. All right, and I encourage you uh, to go through, if you find, uh, your, uh, the research guide for your particular uh, civil or industrial engineering, whichever one, to go through these different tabs, uh, read through them. Uh, I give database descriptions and different kinds of tips and give you some links to different things. Um, online training, there are some tutorials that you have access to. Keeping Current talks a little bit more about setting up alerts. Um, distance users, for people like you, how do you access this information, uh, and some reference materials as well. So I don't want to keep y'all longer. I know y'all have got a lot to do. I'll be happy to uh, hear from any of you. Like you can see, uh, on most of the engineering research guides are ones that I've uh, either created or recently inherited, and you'll find my contact information right there. So if you are doing some research and you need uh, assistance uh, con help constructing a search for Scopus or some of our other databases, or maybe you know maybe there's you're not sure which database to really uh, search, you know if you just send me an email, tell me what your research is about, I'll be happy to work with you through email or over the phone, uh, however is convenient for you uh, to help you get that information you need. So thank you very much, and uh, sorry for the delays there. But I was really happy to get this opportunity to, to um, share this with all of y'all. And uh, please let me know whatever I can do to, to help you in your research. Thank you.